What, what do you think about the glasses? The which? My glasses. No, they're all. Next into the tank is an inventor team with a unique product and a combined age of nearly 150 years. John, we're almost there. But can they nail down a deal with a shark? This invention has been 28 years in the making. It's the only one of its kind. It's a world changer. It is going to be an absolute winner. Here, John. Oh, cute. I love the red braces. <laughs> I think that's leaning towards someone here. Matches the dress. It's meant to be. Bit of eye candy here. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, sharks. Oh, I'm Bill. I'm John. We met through the Inventors Association in Melbourne. Oh, wow. There's an Inventors yeah. Association. Yeah, there's an Inventors oh, Association in Melbourne. Uh, John has created a double chuck drill. Ooh, creative. I like it. Many years ago, I was trying to build a cubby house for my children. I had a ladder and I was going up and I was drilling the holes. Then I'd come down, I'd pick up the next cordless drill, then I'd screw the screws in. Oh, blow this, I'm wasting too much time. I go out and buy a double chuck drill. No such thing. So I built my first prototype in 1990. That's 28 years. That's been a long journey. I've interviewed many carpenters, plumbers, electricians, DIYs, and the response to buying a one-handed double chuck drill has been absolutely electrifying, which is what's kept me going. But uh, we've stopped now because uh, we've run out of dosh. Oh, that happens. It is patented in Australia. Number 2008 314 052. <laughs> and we have a patent in the UK. 7997 uh, uh, we, believe you. we believe you on the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we would like you to invest in our business for $90,000 to buy 25% of our business. John's been at it for quite a long time and this is probably our last chance, so we need you. <laughs> <laughs> Bill and John, Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. I've been enjoying this pitch already and you've barely started. <laughs> so you're asking for $90,000 for 25%. Yes. Which values your business? At $360,000. $360,000. Oh, Andrew, good man on the figures. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a low valuation. And the reason for that is that we are not in production yet. Tell us, what is a double chuck drill? Let's show us how it works. Are we going to come up here? All right, let's, let's have a look. Come on. Show us how it works. Can you hold those for me, please? Can I hold some? Yeah, you can hold some. Thank you. I always thought you had a screw loose. <laughs> As you can see, you drill your pilot hole and then press the chuck, chuck change. That's amazing. So, so this rotation is the key thing. Yes, yeah. That's what the patent's on, yes. the automatic change. That's a double chucker. Yeah, look at it. He loves this. He loves this invention, doesn't he? <laughs> Hello, anybody hey, home? John, come to come us. Back. Thank you. That's really, really, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah. And it's unique. There are multi-head drills out there, aren't there? I'm sure there yes, are. Yes, there are. How are they different to yours? You've got to use two hands to change the chucks. So you basically got to... So this is, this is all You've about... You've got to it. turn it physically. Yes, yeah, I thought. And yeah. the uh, WorkSafe people don't like that because there's a chance that the trigger should, could turn it yeah. and drill their hand. Wow. How much money have you invested in this, John? Do you really want to know that, Andrew? I'm afraid so. 2.3. 2.3 million, million dollars. dollars. Oh, my God. Wow. Where did you get 2.3 million dollars from? I had two properties. Two farms. So you sold the properties to pay for this invention? Well, the bank said I had to. I owed them too much money. You've got to remember is that I'm just a farmer and uh, I'm not really a businessman, and so I made a few mistakes. I'm still flabbergasted over you've put 2.3 million yeah, into so this. Yes, so am I. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> John, over the years, you know, when you sold the first farm and then you've put more and more money into it, was there ever a moment that you went, I'm out? No, never. But you haven't sold one. No, not just why we're here. Do you own the patent, John? Yes. And Bill, do you own any shares in this? 20%. And have you put real dough in? As in time and effort. Bill's on board because well, of his expertise in... He's a businessman and I'm not. 
So Bill, how long have you been on the journey with John? Probably close to three years now. So in all that time, did you ever ponder, this is a dead horse and we're flogging it too hard? John has invented an ingenious drill that solves a simple handyman problem, but it's cost him 28 years and $2.3 million without a single sale to date. So, Bill, how long have you been on the journey with John? Probably close to three years now. So, in all that time, did you ever ponder or think that this is a dead horse and we're flogging it too hard? I'm a firm believer that the concept is great. What I've done since I've been involved with John is said, don't spend any more money. Okay. Excellent. Let's assess this. Let's work out the best way of going about That's it. That's right. And don't put good money after bad. You didn't want to invalidate him and his invention, but at the same time, you didn't want him to spend any more money. No. I got it. So who have you shown it to? Which of the global brands in this machine, this tools business, have you shown it to? We showed it to TTI in Hong Kong, Tectonic Industries. Yeah. And um, we've showed it to uh, Bosch, Black & Decker. What about DeWalt? Yeah, well, all this was some years ago, Andrew, yeah. So you've got nobody currently reviewing the technology with a view to licensing? No. We nearly had uh, a sale to Sears in America who've got almost 4,000 stores. Getting a deal with a retailer is not going to help you because they're going to ask you to produce stock. The licence deal is the only way we can rescue you, John. We need to find someone who will take the design licence off you and that's the way you get uh, a certain amount back for each drill sold. You'll have to licence this to a drill manufacturer. Yep, that'd be the way to go, yeah. So, uh, look, John, negotiate a good deal and try and get as large a portion back of that $2.3 million as you possibly can. Mm. I doubt you'll get the whole thing back. I think, honestly, here you're talking about recovering some funds, not getting a return on your investment. Really cool drill, but I'm out. Good luck. Thank you, Rat. Thanks, Steve. I think it's a very, very clever design and you've solved a problem that is out there. I'm not a natural partner here for you, so and I don't think I can open the doors that you need me to open, so I'm out. Thanks for coming on the show. I think you've taught our audience all sorts of things about entrepreneurship and that includes persistence because, gosh, you guys have absolutely stuck at it. Unfortunately for this deal, though, I'm out. Yep, OK, you go. Yep. Glenn. Bill. You know, I, I am an impatient handyman and I absolutely will be a customer. Love it. It is a really functional, practical tool. Um, I will rack my brains around my network. Let's see if we can get a manufacturer to share your vision. It's a tough gig. But unfortunately, today, guys, I'm out. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'd love to help you. But it's an offer of help. It's not an investment. I happen to know the number two guy in DeWalt in the US, which is the trades uh, arm of Back and Decker. You get me your patent papers, I'll endeavour to see if they all licence you and, and rescue this journey of yours, which has been uh, incredible. That will be great. Appreciate it. So, you know, you're not alone in this journey. That's OK. Bill says I've got stickability. Stickability, hey. All the best. Bye, Thanks, Bill, Bill and John. John. Take care. That's thank right. you very much. No worries. And thank you for your time. Thank you yeah, for all we're no here. Worries. Oh, hang on. John's not letting go of the product. He's putting it. But look at that. He's so neat. I love it. We are certainly not going to stop now. It's been a great stepping stone uh, with the sharks. I'm very pleased. Next in the tank is a grandmother who wants to make her mark in the health food industry and prove that it's never too late to take on the world. I'm 70 next year. I started a little retirement business to keep me from getting bored at home. I'm not a person that can sit around. I'm a person who likes to know how things work. I'm just interested. I've seen it so often on TV. I'm thinking, have they really got a, like an aquarium in there? 
I want a shark on board because they have the business acumen that I don't have. I barely know what a CEO is, but I think I need one. <laughs> Hi sharks, <laughs> I'm Jenny. Um, my company is Strange Grains Gluten Free Bakery in Perth in Western Australia. It's a wholesale artisan bakery. I'm looking for investment of 350,000 for 10% of my business. Okay. That's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Business came about because I'm a celiac and when I first started playing with this, there wasn't much out there in palatable breads and a bit of research and a lot of experiment. I came up with a recipe that I thought was not too bad, I could eat it. And I started a market stall on the strength of it. And after about six weeks, I thought, hang on, I'm not gonna be able to be in my kitchen for much longer with this and started looking for a big bakery. It just took off, I had to get distributors because I could no longer do the deliveries myself. Once the distributors came on board, it just went mad and I still can't cope with Western Australia. So Jenny, that's 350,000 for 10% of your company. Yes. So you're valuing your company at $3.5 million. Yes. Can you point to your best selling loaf of bread? This is the best seller. To make a large loaf costs $1.60. What's its price point? Between 13 and 15. Hey. 13 and 15 dollars. 15 dollars, yeah. yeah. So it's a premium product and you make it for? Dollar 60. Dollar 60. Can I, I look at a 13 dollar loaf of bread? Some of the top restaurants in Perth use that across the board because it's a really nice loaf. But look how big that is, that's probably two loaves. That's 13 bucks. Yeah. Buck 60's worth of ingredients. Yeah. This is fabulous. Thank you. Would you like to sit down? I'd love to, thank you. It's fantastic. I can't stop eating it. You've done an, a great job here, so I'm not surprised you. you've got all these awards. So what is the secret? Do you know, I don't really want to tell you on air. <laughs> so it literally is a secret. It is a secret recipe. OK. That is, a, that is amazing. Um, three and a half million buck valuation. Can you talk to your economics in, of the business, please, to let us understand how you've, you've come to that? The turnover last financial year was just under a million. Wow. This financial year, it's going to be double that. Two million turnover. I think it might be even more. Do you have much debt or...? No debt at all. No, we paid for it all out of, out of turnover. So, so may I ask, well, how much you've invested in the business, please? I sold $80,000 worth of shares. Every now and again, you know, I get a bit short or something because I've never even had a credit card. And then I'll <laughs> use some of my own money and then, oh, no, don't clap me. I got a credit card this year, but I haven't You've used it yet. You've got a credit card this year for the first <laughs> yeah, but time. but she hasn't used it yet, which is good. That's Very great. great. <laughs> now, look, I, I'm going to let you know where I'm at. I think you, you, you have a, a great business. It's doing exceptionally well. But I just can't get excited. It's health food. I can care less about it. I'm going to bow out and um, really wish you all the best, Jenny. It's been Thank fantastic. Thank you very much. But I am out. Yeah, Jenny, <coughs> um, I love what you've done. This is going to develop into a beautiful brand around artisan bread concept. The thing that I'm getting nervous about is, from a marketing position, you're too niche. And I can't justify the valuation. Hey, thanks anyway. <laughs> Jenny, how old were you when you started the business? Um, 60 years. Are you married? Uh, I've got a few exes. <laughs> <laughs> a few exes. I like that. Breaking hearts across, <laughs> across the West. <laughs> they probably can't keep up with you. <laughs> so, Jenny, I love the fact that you've done this late in life because I'm sort of, you know, fond of this sort of twilight years and I'm a great believer that you keep on learning and growing irrespective of how old you are and I think you're a fantastic example of that. We're all in awe of you, that's very obvious. But I'm not really the person to add a lot of value to your business. 
in terms of scaling it. So I'm out. OK. Thanks anyway. So what would you like from us to help you with? Um, I guess I'm just looking for a partner to... I can lean on a little bit sometimes, you know. I hate making all the decisions myself. That's, I guess that's what I want, is the advice. I have no idea what's the right way. I mean, Jetty, you're wrong. I was going to say, you're absolutely you, you, wrong. 80,000 bucks, no debt, and you built this business. You've got more business acumen than you know. You actually it. have. Yeah. You know what business is? Business is common sense and making sure you make more income than there is expenses. That's as simple as it gets. And then how do you grow it? So I think you can do it without me. I'm out. OK, thanks anyway. <laughs> Thank you. So. Four sharks are out, just one shark left. Jen, there's people in every corner of Australia who can't eat gluten. I know. Would you like to be in the coals and woolies of the world? In other words, that it becomes our normal? Would you like that? I would love to have it all over Australia. Yeah. But I physically am not able to cope with it. And I, I mean, I figured I could do it myself anyway, but it might take 10 years, and hey, I'm in my 80s then. So I'd really love to see it up and running. Honestly, going to Woolworths and Coles, that's going to be hard labour. I think the Coles and Woolies strategy is wrong. It goes into the big supermarket chains, it dilutes the brand and damages the brand Amazing. integrity. So, Jenny, maybe, maybe the right partner fit for you isn't sitting right here right now. You like swimming in the tank? It's fun, isn't it? <laughs>
So, you've been out there considering Naomi's offer? You wanted $350,000 for 10% of your business, valuing it at three and a half million. Naomi's offered you $350,000 for 25% of your business, valuing it at 1.4 million. What have you come up with? If we went in together, would you consider 20%? When it comes to the percentage, I looked really carefully at why 25% and the value that I'd bring to the business. And I'm not prepared to devalue my time or my energy. Yeah, okay. Oh, we have a deal! Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> You won't be alone. See you, Jenny. Well done. Thank you. Well done. You're on your way. Wow. Congratulations. I oh, know. Wow. You got a deal. I did. Isn't that lovely? I haven't had time to absorb it yet. Probably middle of the night I'll wake up going, hey! <laughs> but right now it's just, oh yeah, deal. <laughs> You're like the grandmother that everybody wants. I wish I was 20 years younger. It would have been so much easier. <laughs> I think you've still got that fire in your belly, though. You've got that magic about you that will make this go far. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. Next in the tank is a fisherman from Perth who's hoping to create a feeding frenzy with his latest invention. Hello Sharks, my name is Lawrence Bardenhorst and I currently reside in Wanneroo in Perth. I have a product here which is going to revolutionise the fishing industry as it is that simple and that smart. I am looking for $56,000 stake for 9% equity. Welcome to Fish Frenzy. This product will be very sought after, as in the world at the moment, there are between eight and 12% of women fishermen, fisherwomen, who are very competitive and are always seeking the edge. I'm going to have to explain it. So we have converted wave energy to perform useful mechanical work in the water. It's the first of its type in the world, and it has achieved beyond expectation. So your goldfish at home in the tank, with it moving its tail like that, compresses and decompresses the water, sending out signals. My hey, I'm lost. Lauren, just to confirm you won 56,000 for 9%, so you're valuing your company 622,000. Do you think you could show us right now? Yeah. Yeah. Then we'll understand what you're pitching. OK. I have no idea what he's talking about. You need a bit of show and tell, that's all. What is going on here? Is this only for female fisher people or male fisher No, people? no, this is for, for both. We have a product in there. You see how the piston moves up and down? Yeah. Now, that does that 360 times in an hour. Because of the wave, you mean because a wave? Because the wave, the wave so, energy. So you're just so the hanging peak this... in the trough of the wave. So you so hang it on your boat. Hang off the boat, right? Hang it off the boat I'm or off an anchor. I'm seasick. And, <laughs> and what has it got to do with women? Well, there are 12% of women fishermen who are always looking for the edge, this. But no, why, why has that got to do with women, though? They like, they're always looking for the edge. This is an edge which nobody but, else has. But doesn't men want the edge? No, we're lazy. We hate to be Oh, no, no, the men know everything about fishing. Really? Oh, careful. <laughs> I think there's some women out there that will... It's, it's a well-known scientific fact that men are better fishermen than fishermen than women. <sighs> so right now, you're being the wave, right? I'm so confused. What is your product? It just went up and down. I still don't know what the product is. My product is this that is in the water. What does it do? It lets out. Burley, I was getting there. Oh, Burley. Right. Let's have Burley. Well. Just for those of us who are not fishermen, Burley is? It is a bait that you put in the water to attract fish. To, to catch fish, you've got to create a fish feeding frenzy. Good. OK. You know, I've got a Burley bucket at home. It's a basically a bucket with some holes in it. You tie it to the side of your boat, you toss it over. What the boat does is it rocks up and down. <laughs> and it, it agitates the Burley. Yes. And the Burley comes out. You should go on Shark Tank. I should go on Shark Tank. Have you sold any of these? 
No, I haven't. I've still got to purchase the molds. We've only finished with the R&D stage now. Those are models. How many of these things do you think you could sell? Because you're asking us to invest in a business worth $622,000. As a business, a first-time product, probably 100000 a year. You think there's 100,000 fishermen out there who are going to need this? No, fisherwomen with an edge. <laughs> As a non-fisherman person thing expert... Um, and a male. And a male. What I'm hearing is this is a bit of a gimmick to get fish to come in the vicinity of where you're fishing to improve your chances of catching fish. That's what fish. everybody does, to cause a fish feeding frenzy. That's what frenzy. your product does, basically. It's, yes. a bit of, it's a bait, right? Yes. Uh, well, you didn't get me on the hook, I'm afraid. Uh, but I wish you well. Thank I'm you. out. This product is not a product that I actually would buy myself. I'm out. Um, you gave us the most confusing pitch I've seen in three years in Shark Tank. <laughs> I'm out. So, Lawrence, as soon as I heard Fisher Woman, I didn't understand. I didn't think fishing was gender specific. And you lost me. I'm out. You've got a really innovative mind. But as a guy who's pitching, don't get lost in the first minute of your pitch. Unfortunately, Lawrence, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, everyone. OK, Lauren, look after yourself. Keep going. Thanks. Have a good day. I actually agree with Steve. I would say that is the worst pitch I can remember. We didn't know what his product was. We didn't know what he got for it.